Hello everybody and welcome back to the workbench where due to injuries and lack of modelling ability at the minute we are having another stock overview which is not what I have planned for this week hopefully my plan for this week will come to fruition next week so this week as you will know from the title but hopefully we are looking at my industrials I have a few industrials more than I thought I had actually and we're going to start with one that is missing a tender I scratch built for it or kit bashed for it ready to run bash it was a triangle that I bashed and this was the first loco I ever bashed about it is the Hornby Cali Pug which has had some modifications made to it based on Kelton Fell at the Scottish Railway Preservation Society Museum in Bowness I think it's painted black because it's a fictional industrial it did have a tender made from a Triang 7 plank wagon. Amazingly, I have the coal load from it, but not the actual tender. So I think I'm going to have to make another one of those. It does need various things doing to it. Though I don't think I really should have added a brake pipe, so that'll be going. So I was still using tension locks when I did this, so that'll be going and replaced with a free link. But it is quite a nice model, actually, I think, for my first attempt. It's a, there's many things I'm not happy with on it. But for my first detailing and um, alteration attempt, I'm very happy with it. And it will long be a part of the fleet once it's got its tender back. It even, requ even required some modification to the chassis to get the lower firebox on here. So, yeah, that was a... A fun build and from my first ever loco bash to my first ever scratch build with brass it's falling off the new chassis that I've literally cut to size for it earlier today it is of course Oak Hill the locomotive see the chimney is currently blue tacked on that needs repairing the chassis does not currently have its motor installed because I literally cut it down for the sake of being able to film this video. So yes, this is my first scratch build out of brass. So that's a Hornby Pug chassis. It was all brass sheet other than the buffer beams and the buffers, I believe. And the chimney, the springs, a few bits came off Great British Locomotives static models. Again, when I did this originally, I was still using tension locks. So the original chassis, which is unfortunately broken, had tension locks on it. And this had just some crude hooks, so... The couplings will be getting replaced on this. The buffers are hopefully getting replaced. I may see if I can get a slimmer chimney as it's not very Man in Wardle looking, which is the rest of the logo. I am very happy with how Man in Wardle looking it is. Obviously, the chassis needs a bit of work to shape it a bit better. And it needs its motor putting back in. But in general, I'm quite happy with this. Getting a full repaint when, as the work continues on it. All of this stuff's coming off. It will go into improved engine green properly. Name, much nicer transfers than the ones here. Nice name on it. Etched number plates. And it will look fantastic. The idea is that it's, it's a loco that comes from the Oak Hill Railway Company, which was taken over by the LBSC. Which is how it ended up in improved engine green. And then of course you know, it didn't last too long with them and was sold on. 
However, you know, a, a lot of like a lot of the terriers that were sold into industry kept their Stroudly livery long into industrial use, so that will be staying with its improved engine green, allowing me to run it either in Brighton ownership or as an industrial. At least that's the theory. Um, from one man in Wardle to an as yet unbuilt man in Wardle, this is one of TS Design's failed prints. I believe this went on to become one of the models, or at least the basis for one of the models that are now sold through Hardy's Hobbies. As you see, it is a failed print. It's got issues all over. I've got the glue, the steps have been glued back on with some brass support. There's chunks missing. It really is a terrible quality print. But I don't think that's enough reason for it to be consigned to the bin when Tom offered it up. He offered this and another one for free to anyone that wanted them. And I thought, you know what, I'll take that. I'll see what I can do with it. And I reckon there is a good loco in there. So that'll be a fun one. It'll probably be on a scratch-built chassis when it's done. See how much weight we can get in it. That'll be fun. Fun, fun, fun. But it should make a nice little shunter. And since we're talking about Tom, I actually got a second one off him. This one, less of a failed print, more of a test build. For those that follow Tom's threads on RM Web, you'll recognise this one. Because it is painted. Obviously, these are not the wheels it had, or in fact the chassis it had. I will again be scratch building a proper chassis. Because Tom experimented with this and was not happy with it. So again, he offered it up. And so... I snapped it up. Scratch built chassis again, some decent wheels. And I think we can make a very nice loco out of this. A sing it's not often you get a single wheeler, so it'd be something quite different. So yes, this is something I'm rather looking forward to working on. And having a nice small 222 tank engine. And we shall move along to one that we, we've seen a few times on the channel is my Peckett. The open, Hornby Peckett open cab, new paint job, a named Lion, which now has lamps, which it didn't have the last time it was on the channel because they had fallen off and I'd not got I'd not got round to sticking them back on. But it is a fantastic model i absolutely love it and of course this is ready to run it's already got a dcc chip in it oh and away it goes i don't believe this one has a dcc chip i think this still needs fitting but it does work at least i know that much i also have the sort of industrial sort of not that most people who collect small locos have this one's in a rather bad shape from a repaint it got in previous ownership but it is the hornby pug i think this is actually a dapple yeah this is from when it was still made by dapple see i've attempted to clean up the terrible paint job it had there's a reason i gave up with that but this um, as it happens, this one will now be donating its chassis to a model of Captain Baxter from the Bluebell Railway. Which is a 3D printed kit I have been offered from someone who has decided they no longer want it. So, of course, I was having it and it will go on the chassis for this one, which it is a decent running chassis. Once I've got it all, it will get its chip then till then it was just dc and the body is keeping it safe but i've always liked the pug so i always you know i really wanted one anyway so we also have here the old airfix pug now the cab bits are missing because i've not got a crew in it yet i do have them they just need to st st sticking on 
and this is part way through detailing and very nice it will be too with its proper cab and you can see under there this is motorized it has a triang motor in it of all things completely filling the boiler and tank space it only comes up to about there where the back of my fingernail is so it really is tight in there but it's an absolutely fantastic model runs beautifully which i was not expecting but that will be my pug because i do like them i'm very tempted to paint it in lancashire and yorkshire livery because again they're absolutely beautiful little tanks and it is the correct livery for them next we have one that is technically not an industrial but at the same time i don't think it ever left the works and that is of course Hornby's Great Western 101 which was for the 175 years of the Great Western Railway this one needs a new cap on its chimney and it will probably get a paint job to be completely honest because you know I'm not a Great Western modeler so it'll probably get painted into a generic industrial livery get some decent handrails on it rather than these molded ones and I think it could be a nice little model even if it does have a pocket rocket chassis under it now again we're moving into territory we're staying in the territory of technically not industrial but at the same time I'm pretty sure for a good while they were oh, don't hit the camera and that is the USA tank which is currently in British Rail livery this is an old Hornby HO1 with just about every name you could imagine on it so we've got made in France Meccano Triang Hornby HO spell A C H O so yes <laughs> take your pick it is, it is a Hornby I've actually I've got the original box for this one I got this very cheap when the rather nicely detailed USA tanks came out it's not a serious enough model that I was willing to pay full price to add one to my collection but at the same time they do have one at the Bluebell Railway and I want one of everything they've got at the Bluebell Railway 30064 I think it is at the Bluebell off the top of my head but yeah so this, this runs reasonably well it's very far out of period for me but I do like it um, as an industrial shunter it does just look like a heavy industrial shunter obviously you know it's a USA tank but it fits in quite well regardless we have a fictional loco next green has red stripes number six on its bunker sides and it is of course Percy it is a Hornby Percy for that matter it has the smoke box door off of a triang jinty it's had the bottom half of its tank cut away and a new bottom to the boiler added i believe i cut that off the great british locomotives static cali 123 and then the motor has also been painted in the body color so that as you're looking at it what you think you're seeing is the size of the firebox what you're actually seeing is the motor Ideally, it wants some crew in that big open cab area. I don't, because it's Percy, I don't want to go to too much effort detailing it up. Although there is a few things I'd like to add. You know, it's got no handrails at the minute. They would be nice. I'm thinking I'll put the crew sticking their heads out either side to avoid having to add 
a full cab interior. But it is something I'm very happy with how that model turned out. Much more realistic. That's actually that's DCC fitted as number six. It's got three link couplings. It's ready to run on all my layouts, which is nice. We'll plonk you there. And now we're moving into territory never before seen on this channel. I mean, I'm probably having a live stream or something, but you know. We're moving out of the realm of steam and into diesel. So this was an early bash for me. It is based on a bash described in a book called Model Railway Locomotives on the Cheap, I believe. It's an excellent book. There's a small class of diesels. I think there's only three or four of them in the 50s never made it to tops but they look very much like the class six that Hornby did the railroad version of but they're an 060 so what we've got under here is an old tall interior chassis which actually works really well compared to the photos of these I've given it a proper cab interior, although you can't see it through the glue and glaze windows. Ladder added to the side and that and the back of the cab modified. That is genuinely it. I used to really like this colour blue for locos. I'm not as keen on it anymore. Oh, there goes the chassis. So chances are it will be getting repainted using the blue that is on the packet is a much richer colour and I much prefer it. And then finally for move these around, give myself a bit more room on camera. Finally for industrial shunters we have of course the Hornby Sentinel. Which is a great model. Everyone knows it's a great model. I've never seen a bad review of this. I'm sure there are some, but I've never seen one. And I absolutely love it. I got these when they came out. I actually got this to use because of its small wheelbase for testing the track on my layout to make sure everything was okay and everything could run. Obviously, the Peckit now does that job. So this has become quite redundant. But at the same time, it lets me run... It will let me run the Ingle Nook in a later period. And I think, you know, taking all these locos together, that's a pretty wide-ranging period we've got for running the Ingle Nook, which would be nice. That is the sort of thing I'm after. So, yes, there is my collection of industrials. You can't see the one I run, so let's move that there. And there they all are. So I'd like to thank you all for watching. It really does mean a lot. Drop down there, smash the like button. Smash the dislike button if you didn't like it, but leave me a comment to tell me why. But please do, smash that like button, leave a comment. If you haven't already, subscribe and ring the notification bell so you get alerted when I upload a video or go live. And I really hope to see you in my live stream this Sunday. Until then, bye for now.